How much will solar panels save you in 2024? Obviously this is a yearly thing, which is why I do this video every year, but ultimately I'll be going off averages of averages because every solar installation, every house has so many variables, I can't possibly tell you how much you will save, but I can give you an idea. With solar panels by themselves, not with batteries, just the panels, does it make sense financially? Not everybody gets them for financial reasons, but I think most people will probably want that. So let me explain how I'm going to do this. Essentially, it's all about how much you consume from the solar that you generate, as in how much you use from those panels rather than export. But everything that you don't consume, you will then export. So essentially, the more you consume, the less you'll export, the more you export, the less you consume. It literally just does that. So if you think, well, I can, I can load shift, I can turn things on at certain times, or I may have a solar divert option, then I might be down here. If I can, if I'm just generating solar and turning things on or I'm not at home or whatever, then you may be further up here. But it'll give you an idea based on what you think your predicted consumption of that solar during the day when it's sunny will be. Now I mentioned I'm using my averages. So the total solar for the year, 3000 kilowatt hours. So that's three megawatt hours. That's what I've used in the previous videos. That's what I'll be using again. And it's based on my consumption. Sorry, not my consumption, my generation using my panels, which are about average in terms of their generating capabilities. I'm also going to use an import price of 24.5p, which is the predicted price for import or price cap that's coming up this October. This, the 15p export, that's again what I have. It's what's fairly easily achievable. In fact, I've had a look and I think it's Eon. I'm with Octopus. Uh, Eon are doing 16.5 pence. So you could probably beat this. Some will be on less, some will be on more. Again, averages. I'm also gonna show you two different tables, two different prices based on mine and what we think Harry's more uh, premium install should get. He paid for a, a more premium install, if you will. Better panels, a company that concentrated on where the house is, what uh, aspect is it, what, what angle is it, they basically took all variables into account and thought, right, okay, this is the best inverter for you, This is the these are the best panels for you, uh, and we reckon he's gonna get at least 15 to 20% more than me, even though his array is smaller, to see if it's worth paying that bit extra to get extra generation. And the reason why he's gone for that is because that's what his research told him was best, especially in the north where generation's not brilliant. You want to optimize everything that hits that roof space. So he used a company called Heatable. This is before any sponsor, he picked them. He is a customer of theirs, no problems at all. They then installed my brother solar panels. That's when the channel started getting involved as a sponsor. And again, no problems at all. So if you're thinking about getting solar panels, please do check heatable.co.uk. They've got lots of helpful stuff on their website, including a quoting tool, and they do battery only installs as well. Now, as I said earlier, the reason why Harry picked them out is because they're more expensive than the off the shelf approach that I used, where the panels were the same and the inverter was the same, whether you're in the south of England or the north of England or Scotland or wherever, it's an off the shelf for everybody the same thing. It wasn't tailored. So it'll cost you more, I would imagine, than average to go to someone like Heatable, but you should generate more. And therefore, seeing as these things are lasting, what, 25 to 30 years plus, probably makes more sense to do that. But that's for another video. In fact, we've talked about this in a video in the channel. I'll link that in the description below. So if you want to watch other solar related stuff that we've done, then please do watch those. It's all in the channel. Right, let me fill this in and let's see how much we think we can save. And in a whirlwind of editing, here we are. Here are the prices and the predictive savings depending on how much you think you can consume. So if you have a solar divert option, whether that's uh, a home battery, which will have other savings on top of this if you have a uh, time of day tariff, uh, or a solar divert for an immersion heater or a solar divert for a, a car charger or something like that, then it's quite possible to be down here in terms of using as much as possible because you will save 24.5 pence per kilowatt hour for every time, uh, well, for every kilowatt hour you use from the solar panels instead of the grid. 
and if you export then you will gain 15 pence. So it's obviously better to use than export. Unless you've got a battery and a time of day tariff then it's the other way around but this is just for solar panels. So worst case scenario, you only consume 30% of everything they generate. That means you will uh, save, if you will, 900 kilowatt hours coming from the grid, which means you would save 220 pounds by not paying 24 and a half pence from your provider, uh, and the rest will be exported and that will save you 315 pounds. So a total yearly saving, 535 pounds. If we go all the way down to, let's say something a bit more realistic because 100% not, although with the battery you could get in the 90s. Let's say 80%, uh, 678 pounds yearly saving, just with solar panels and clever usage. Should also be clear that prices will only go up. I mean, as I've said this many times before, that is a current upcoming price gap, 24 and a half pence. If we fast forward five years, that's gonna be higher because that's the nature of inflation. If you look back five years or 10 years, 15 years, the graph generally, because of inflation, just goes up. It will do this a little bit, but ultimately the general trend will be upwards. So as these are, as I said earlier, staying here for at least 25, 30 years, given the guarantees and warranties that they typically come with, then, well, that will be higher. So therefore that will also be higher. So for example, if that went to 35 pence import, then the 100% wouldn't be 735, it'd be just over a thousand pounds. So the more that goes up, the more you will save. Now, of course, it depends on how much the solar array costs you. Again, I can't possibly do that because everybody's different. So if you look at between four and 7,000 pounds, it depends on where you think you'll be. 70% consumption gives you 650 quid a year savings. So if you're spending six and a half thousand pounds, then it'll take you 10 years to get your money back. But in reality, it won't, it'll be sooner than that because ultimately that again will go up. I would say that you're probably looking at seven and eight, seven to eight years on average, depending on what array that you get. Now I think what I need to do is change this based on a more premium Harry type, if you will, install, something that he heatable typically will do. So it will be tailored to the house rather than give everybody the exact same equipment no matter where they are. And in a whirlwind of more editing, here we have the new figures. So I've added 15% to my average generation to try and look at the more premium end. So if I'd have gone for something that Harry's got on my roof, then roughly I reckon that's what I would have generated. And then we've got the same sort of figures. So let's have a look at the difference it makes. If your consumption is down at 30% and you're looking at 616 pounds a year, and if we go down to let's say 80%, then it would be 780 pounds a year. I forgot what the other figures were. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> so you're looking at roughly 110 pounds a year on top of what my panels would have saved based on the same import price of 24 and a half and export price. If it's 110 pounds saving, then over 10 years, that's 1100 quid. So how much is the more premium, if you will, install going to cost you over the standard cheaper one? Whether this makes sense to go for a, a more expensive panels or more panels, maybe the same panels, just more of them, then I'll leave that up to you because I don't know how much extra it would cost you to go to that extra level. Again, because everybody's different. So this is where you need to get, as I would always recommend with anything expensive, three quotes. Get one from Heatable, two from whoever else, and then see if they're in the same sort of ballpark and they're telling you the same things. And again, with anything this expensive, pay at least part of it on a credit card, like a, you know, the deposit, for example. So it gives you an extra level of protection. So I guess if you could go for the 80% consumption, which again, it is quite easily achievable, especially in the you know, six, seven, eight months that are darker because you won't generate that much, so it's easy to use, then 780 quid a year saving. Let's, let, let's have a look at that one. That's a lot. In 10 years, that's 7,800 pounds. But it will be higher, as I've said before, because the price will only undoubtedly go up. So if you're looking at eight and a half to 9,000 pounds savings in 10 years, based on 80% consumption and that sort of generation, nearly three and a half um, megawatt hours, for me, that would probably make sense given you know what solar panels tend to cost. The one bit of advice I would always give anybody getting solar though, 
is A, listen to your installer. They know your house, they know the panels, they know what's best for you. So the advice I'm about to give you is generic, but it is something I would at least listen to and I would tell myself if I could go back in time. And that's if you can fit more panels on your roof. Let's say you've got a quote for eight panels, but you could in theory fit 12, whether it's on different sides, you know, east and west, for example, then get as much as possible. Put as much solar as you could possibly cram up there because I guarantee if you get an eight panel system, yet you could fit 12, within a few months you will be looking at it going, I wish I'd have got more. Because the more I have, the more I generate, the more I, oh, damn it. The biggest expenses are in the electrician, the scaffolding, the just, well, the labor. So adding a few extra panels, although there is an expense there, it's not actually a big part of the whole price of one of these things. So if we're looking at panels from, what, 70 to 120 quid on average, let's say that. Adding another four panels, you know, three, four, 500 pounds, it's, it's a little bit extra, but compared to the whole cost, go for it. And adding more because of the price of scaffolding. We're talking, I think for this house, it was like six, 700 quid just for scaffolding. Then the electrician has to come back. Then someone has to go back on the roof. Then, well, labor, labor, labor. So you will be spending a hell of a lot more adding panels after the fact than just adding them when you do your install. So there we have it. Whether you get a relatively cheap, good value install as I did, or a more premium one from someone like Heatable, like Harry did, solar panels for me absolutely make sense. So the fact that the electricity prices have come down this past 12 months has meant that the solar panel return rate, if you will, has dropped. But they'll go back up again, I'm sure of that. There we go, I think I'm finished. And remember, always do your own research. Don't blame someone else if it's wrong, <laughs> because this is thousands of pounds. You need to spend at least several hours, ideally a few days, spread out over a few weeks to get the best uh, solution for you, to get your three quotes, to, you know, don't, don't, don't do the car insurance thing where you just renew it. Put some effort into it. Okay, thank you ever so much for watching. If you do have the time and the money, then please click on the join button next to the channel name. That means you can pay 99p a month, cancel at any time. You get members only exclusive videos, usually not very good ones, but they are exclusive. And you get all the normal videos on Sunday instead of Friday. Or just subscribe to the channel and well, thank you for watching. So I'll see you soon and have a good day.